Well, good morning or good afternoon, everyone. So glad to have you with us today. My name is Cindy McDonald, and this is my Friday Forum. It's something that I started when COVID started, and here we are, three years later, we're still going strong, having the opportunity to talk to experts in areas that are important to you and your students and your families and those that you work with. And so my name is Cindy McDonald. As I said, I'm an educator and an entrepreneur, and I reside in Central California, very soggy Central California right now. So as you're joining us, please put your name and your location in so that our guest, Brad Schiller from Prompt, and also Carmen, who you all know and love, will be able to see um, who you are, where you're from. And then also our topic for today is about chat GPT. So we want to know, have you used it? Yes or no? Have you used chat GPT? So we're so glad to have everybody here. And talking about this topic, I've heard more and more about this as you know, over the last month to six weeks, and it really has a lot of implications. And we're going to talk today about it in terms of our college, the work we do with students and applying to college. Is it a problem or is it a solution? So that's the question I posed to Brad. And I knew Brad was the person to go to to ask this question. Um, Brad and I have known each other for many years. Like you just said, you and um, you had just started prompt, um, I think. Yeah. We met. And and so so those of you who are not introduced to Brad. Brad is the founder and president of Prompt. It's a leading college admissions coaching company. Um, many of us use. Many of you'll use it either on its own or through college planning platforms that you offer. It has an essay management college essay curriculum, and they also have writing coaches. And it's used by over 600 IECs and over 10,000 students per year. Now, Brad himself is an expert in literacy education. And you just recently released an English academic literacy curriculum under the pen brand. You're going to tell us exactly what yeah, you need, basically, Yeah, that, like we actually now have an entire curriculum that thousands of students are using basically to improve reading and writing skills, um, actually primarily outside of the United States. So like English learners, especially in India, Latin America, we'll have like 50 plus thousand people using it by the end of the year, which is pretty cool. Well, and you've had that for all along. I remember you telling me about your ebook that you first published, and yeah. it was like, I don't know, 100 pages long or yeah. something. It was a lot more than 100 pages. It was like 100,000 words. Um, oh that was what it was. So, yeah, I mean, we, this, you know, it's some, I deeply care about like literacy education, especially critical thinking skills. A lot of that we're going to chat about to, today as well as we go through this. Well, and that shows your knowledge and background and expertise in this area. And also, I want people to know about your background. You have a degree in mechanical engineering and management science from MIT. So there is no no um, lack of understanding from yeah, the, I, yeah, yeah, I understand this stuff fairly well. I actually know the uh, Sam Altman, who's the uh, the CEO of of OpenAI that creates ChatGPT. I actually okay. chatted with him this past weekend about something different. Um, but yeah, it's kind of uh kind of wild. Um, was never imagining that he would get to this this point, Sam, but uh it's pretty cool. Is he a fellow MIT graduate? No, I I was at uh Y Combinator, which is like a startup incubator, um, number of years ago in 2013 with another company, and he had gone through Y Combinator earlier and he was like one of the he used to run Y Combinator. Uh, for a while, but he was like a mentor of ours. So uh, back in the day, this was prior to uh, him doing open AI. So um, yeah, pretty, pretty interesting. Um, and so we're gonna, and, and Cindy, I'll, I'll let you kind of guide things. But the most important thing we're going to do today, and a lot of you haven't used chat GPTs, we're going to use it. Okay, today, and we're going to use the new GPT four model um, that just came out that even has better outputs than uh, than the GPT-3 model uh, that was previously done. So we're going to have play around with that a lot today. We're going to see some of the implications of that. 
I'm going to do some stuff live. So, you know, this isn't stuff that I've like kind of canned in front, you know, before we do this. So you can actually see like real experience of like how your students would maybe be using this and some of like the mistakes that they might make or some of the good things they might be able to do or that sort of thing with it. Okay. Oh, that sounds exciting. Um, I and it is interesting. I haven't tried chat GPT yet, but I have tried AI because I do Jasper and we have other people in our industry who have been introduced to Jasper through Mark Kruver. So um, if you've used Jasper, go ahead and stick that in the chat or anything like it. So even if you haven't done chat GPT, you know, put something like that. Um, yeah. The next question I would ask, and then we're going to have you just dive in, and I'll just let you, you know, show us, is if you haven't, whether you've done or not, have your students used it? And I think that might be an interesting question. I may not have asked all my students, so I don't know the answer to that. But I yeah, well, part of the answer is, and this was like kind of old data, a couple months old. Um, there was a hundred million students using it globally. Um, so chances are, even if you don't know, the student was using it, uh, there's a good chance by now that maybe they've used it or tried it or something around there, right? Um, which is really interesting. Yeah, the, like Allison says, it, and that's the thing I think that really catches people's um, imagination and attention is the fact that it can actually write code. So. Mm -hmm. I think that yeah and I know people working on that that's like really will help developers develop stuff a lot faster mm -hmm. which is interesting mm -hmm. um the other question as we get started is um basically my my question is uh for for you all is are you okay with your students using chat GPT for college essays like uh you know what is your thoughts on that drop that into the chat uh, I know that there's a wide range of, of feelings here, um, so please please drop that in and and uh, um, and, and Allison, I, I think you you're not in the minority. Um, <laughs> let me put it that way. <laughs> um, so that that that, but the the key point here is that um, we're going to be talking about today. We're actually going to take a look at like. Hey, what happens if we have ChatGPT write a whole essay for us? What does that look like? Okay. We're also going to look at a bunch of other things, kind of like of how can you use ChatGPT with your own writing or other things like that, that maybe um, that we can do. You know, I see some people dropping in here, like Marcia, for example, you know, for brainstorming or that sort of thing as, as well. And we can chat about that. Um, but I, I, I just want to preface as we get started in this. Um, that you know where where are students at from a literacy perspective i think this is really important for everybody to kind of understand or, or think through in terms of when students are using chat gpt or things that you need to be concerned about okay is that globally only two percent of adults are high literacy okay and that's essentially the same for let's say high school students all right. And what that means is, is that only 2% are able to adequately evaluate evidence-based arguments, like in writing. Okay. And so what that means is, is that maybe some of your really high performing students are high literacy and they can actually, let's say, read an output from chat GPT, think critically about the output and understand how to improve it or what is correct or may not be correct. But the other 98% or like a huge portion of students that you may work with may not be able to do that. They may not be capable of that. Okay. And what you're going to see is, is that chat GPT makes stuff up, right? It lies a lot. Um, it it uh, kind of fills in gaps of information. Uh, if they're using it for class and using it to write an essay, it may just like write the wrong thing, right? May write factually incorrect information. Um, and a lot of students can't actually tell the difference. OK, and that I think is is one of the absolute biggest things um, to to uh, to come out here. And I, I saw the Allison comment in here that and, and, and by the way, I think about that a lot right? <laughs> of what does that explain that just like the two percent high literacy stuff? Like what what are the things that start explaining that? And if you keep this lens in your mind of like when you're interacting with people or you're interacting with your students, like 
who may be high literacy or not. And like, as I said, just evaluating an evidence-based argument is like a key critical factor of, of this. And it is, and it, and it really kind of helps like determine like, how do I even work with certain students to be perfectly honest, right? Um, so let's go ahead. Um, I can send out the research associated with it, but I think it's like the, PISSA scores or something like that. They, they do like global liter literacy. They also do this for math. Math is equally as bad, basically, <laughs> math, <laughs> math abilities. <laughs> um, but uh, I'm happy to, I'll send that over to, to, uh, to Cindy later because it's a super interesting read, um, essentially. Uh, and that information also dovetails with that uh, over half of student, half of peep adults uh, don't read at an eighth grade level, okay? Um, so when you start combining these things together, it really helps like how we think about we, you know, working with students, uh, and what do we expect them to do? Cause sometimes we give them feedback on essays and you're like, well, why didn't they execute the feedback on the essay? And it's because they didn't understand it. Okay. They couldn't like think critically about it or interpret that, uh, and execute it. All right. I'm going to share my screen here. Um, we're going to have some fun. Um, got some essays up. I got chat GPT up. Um, and, uh, I think the, the first thing that I'm just going to mention, so we're going to talk about a few things today, how chat GPT works. We're going to use it live. We're going to first talk about a few ways students can maybe use chat GPT or might think about using chat GPT. I'm not going to say whether or not these ways are ethical or not. Um, we can have that discussion. I'm just going to really like the goal is to talk about, to show like what it is capable of basically at this point. Uh, we're going to use it live, uh, and we're going to talk about chat GPT checkers that are similar to plagiarism checkers, uh, and we're going to look at one of those live. We're actually going to implement one of those within prompt within the next couple of months, um, but it's it's more of a, a, a guide than than the truth as, as well, okay, um, because that, that's a little challenging. So just some ways that we've seeing students using chat GPT related to college admissions essays or have heard about these. So again, we're not talking about the ethics of each of these right now. Um, we are just talking about some use cases that you might see, okay? Um, so students writing full essays, right, based off of a set of in, uh, inputs, like here's a prompt, uh, here's an outline for the essay, or here's what I want the essay to be about. This is the first thing that we're gonna do within chat GPT today and see what the outputs are. Um, the next is like making an existing essay better. So you can say, here's a draft of my essay, make this better. Okay, something like that. Uh, and you can explain a little bit how you want them to make it or what you want it to consider. Um, thought starters for how to begin essays or brainstorming, those types of things. Uh, feedback on essays they may want to, uh, ideas they may want to write about. Um, you know, a good one that I think is, is that a lot of students really struggle with because students have never had to been taught how to be concise with their writing ever, um, because we tend to be like, hey, write a three page paper on something. And then the students like, like a page and a half and they're like, oh, shoot, I got to get the three pages. And it's like, well, concise is better, but, <laughs> but, but like our entire education system is really bad at teaching concise writing. Um, but these AI tools are actually really good at, you know, concise writing. Okay. Uh, and then also just, um, you know, students that plugging an essay or plugging in a draft and being like, hey, how can I improve this essay or, you know, fix this essay for me or that sort of thing uh, to be done. Uh, and if you have other ideas or seen other ways that students are using this for college admissions essays, please feel free to drop that uh, into the chat as well. OK, we're going to go ahead and pull up chat GPT for um, if you have any ideas for like, hey, I want an essay about X topic or that sort of thing, feel free to drop that into the chat as, as well. Or I'm going to, um, if you have one better than the one I'm going to use, which is associated with, you know, our classic, uh, you know, mission trip uh, thing, um, you know, <laughs> just for fun, um, you know, I was going to do. But if you have a different one that you want to see, feel free to drop that into the chat and I'm going to pull it up. Cool. All right, so this is the, uh, this is chat GPT. Uh, if anybody hasn't seen kind of the interface here, right? It's a chat based kind of interface where you can ask it things. Um, and, uh, you know, if you don't get kind of the exact result that you want, you can kind of then ask it another question. Um, there's most of your students right now have access to like the default uh, GPT 3.5, which is free. 
Okay. Um, GPT-4 just launched, what, last week? Um, this is a model that is a substantial improvement on the 3.5 model for GPT. Uh, and that's the one that we're going to be using today. Uh, I have access to it because I have a paid account. Um, you can get access to it for a paid account too, but we can only do 25 messages every three hours, basically, right now. Um, so probably not going to do 25 messages today, but I'm just mentioning like this is kind of the current capacity of it. Uh, but your students, this is the model that like, hey, if they wanted to pay for it or maybe by this fall, this is going to be the default model. Um, so it's just something for you to think about. And I apparently have some toys that are making noises in the background. I am sorry if you hear that from some children. Um, all right. Yeah. I don't know what it's doing. All right. Um, let's go ahead and get started. Okay. So I don't think see anything here. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, we'll just kind of type something in. So Brad, this is like you just, again, I haven't, I mean, I've heard and read all about it, but I haven't gone to the actual website. So you just set up an account and then you have it? Is it something you- Yeah, can exactly. So you can create a free account, uh, but you have to have an account in order to to, to use it. Um, I, I'd recommend everybody just like go and play around with this. Mm -hmm. You know, you might, might as well. Um, but let's say, you know, and I, I'm just going to do something that's like very simple at first, we could do something that's way more complicated, but the key is, is like, okay, write me a common application essay. Um, I don't know. Let's, what school do we want to pick? Cindy, where, where do you want to, um, let's to? do for university of Pennsylvania. Uh, you pen. Mm -hmm. Um, Uh, let's say using the following information. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking University of Chicago, but I know they have very, very specific esoteric type of. Practice. Yeah, but you know what? You can ask that too, and it will yeah. do like something that's a little more esoteric, right? Or or do something that's like you know associated with those prompts. So you can say, "Hey, write me an essay on this specific prompt that is mm -hmm. from the University of Chicago." You can definitely do that as well. I think we'll probably won't do that today, um, but. Um, so like, let's say I just like brainstorm some content here, right? So I went on a mission trip to, Af um, Mexico. So, yeah. Mexico. I, uh, tutored students in math and, um, talked to them about, uh, the importance of education. I had a wonderful time doing it. We, you know, um, include a story of how I helped a kid named Pablo. Um, I don't know what 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 I helped Pablo do. Um, learn some English. I don't learn how to speak rudiment yep. in English. Within five days, he was able to um, converse with me in broken English about uh, the food, about his favorite food. Okay. what I learned about myself um, as a result of my experience. Okay, so we're just gonna keep that open-ended, okay, rather than specific, um, because what you'll see is, is like this, this makes stuff up, okay? All right, so. Here we go, right? It's just write, writing it for, for me. And you right. can give it a word limit too, right? Yeah, you can give it a word limit. That's why I said common application essay, because maybe it knows that already, right? So what it's basing mm -hmm. off of. Um, 
see like it says i was motivated by my desire to help others and broaden my understanding of the world like you're probably just seeing stuff in here they're like oh my goodness like this is the exact type of random shit that students write in their essays oh, yeah. right that you know sounds quote unquote good right mm -hmm. um settle as i settled into my volunteer role right paired with the local student easy to learn right enthusiastic boy named pablo right there there it is right diligent study student absorbing information despite our language barrier which was you know gets pulled in there um curiosity to learn bridging cultural gaps you know a classic like phrase that might appear in one of these college admissions essays right um in addition to our math lessons right did rudimentary english there's my phrase there right um blend of numbers and language look at this turn of phrase that we you know throw in here uh within just five days right so it's even pulling that in you know it's enchiladas of course you know <laughs> favorite food right um apparently by the way you know G uh, gpt makes a lot of generalizations of certain populations uh let's put it let's put it that way right <laughs> people so um that you end up with and uh there we go right so significant milestone look at this led to deep personal revelations personally i enjoyed the discovery of te you know teaching right incredible satisfaction that comes from helping others learn and grow touring the students in mexico illuminated the potential within me to make a real difference in the lives of others this newfound passion has ignited my desire to pursue a career in education so even throwing that stuff in now right it's making stuff up it fills in the gaps now i mean a positive force for change and empowerment right it knows kind of those little buzzwords that, you know, end up in these example essays that end up online, right? That's where it's pulling this stuff from, mm -hmm. um, you know, highlighting empathy, patience, and adaptability in order to effectively communicate with them. I had to put myself in the shoes and approach our lessons with an open mind, you know, embracing diversity and the power of human connection, right? It just kind of, re it gets very repetitive, right? With these kind of buzzwords or these kind of phrases you end up finding, right? And then it includes the University of Pennsylvania right there, right? Just like we said, I'm eager to carry these lessons with me. I'm confident in the diverse and inclusive environment you pen, blah, blah, blah. My experience in Mexico shaped passion of education and it helps shape the person I am today, someone who believes in the power of knowledge to create bridges, empower minds, and transform lives. Okay? Yeah, yeah. This, it's, I mean, it's amazing to see it and to actually see it generate all of this because as someone said, it's like, yikes, yeah, this is very, I have a student who loved writing like this this past year. And um, by, by the way, right, what is this, what is this model based on, right? It's essentially based on uh, a lot of these polls from a lot of the example essays that are online already, mm -hmm. you know, so Unfortunately, you know, as we know, a lot of the example essays online are a little bit more like this, where it's where it's uh, we would maybe not consider it actually that good of an essay and admissions officers would not consider it that good of an essay, but it sounds pretty good. It sounds right? cohesive. It sounds like this, sense. this is like a very common, like if I got a first draft from a student that didn't do a lot of brainstorming, this is probably what it would be, mm -hmm. right? Maybe they looked at a couple of examples of these essays online and they were a decent writer like this is this is essentially what that would be okay and and that 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 to some degree is concerning right mm -hmm. um but it's also important for us to understand because this is uh effectively like you're going to see some of these types of outputs right so if you're seeing these pieces or types of language in here um you might find that that it is uh you know you might suspect that it might be chat gpt uh built but keep in mind like I was using the GPT-3 model was not nearly as good as this. Okay, look at this. We barely put anything in. If I put an entire outline of an essay in, which I'm not gonna do now because we don't have as much time and I wanna cover a few other things, you are going to get a better result. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and uh, at the same time, like you read through this and you're like, this is just like a lot of fluff. Right. Right. There's no substance. It's just a very lot. little substance. A lot of AP words thrown in here. Like my favorite one is the illuminate 
ask that you know the section yeah but at the same time it's not like it's not like they're using them not in the right context or like these weird words that we see sometimes students pull in like these are like Mm -hmm. words that people would normally have in their vocabulary that we'd be like yeah that's a good use of 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 vocabulary right and and vocab like uh what we call lexical resource right so um yeah I, i do think that this is uh you know and this is where I, I come into this, you know, where it's like, hey, the students that are applying to these highly selective institutions from like, or at least the way we think about writing coaching, and like, who's going to need writing coaching still, or, or it's not maybe not the best way to put it. But like, a lot of students are gonna be like, hey, I can just use chat GPT. And when you look at this essay, and you think of like, what are the essays that students are using and still getting into like many colleges, this is as good as those, not the highly selectives, of course, like a U- University of Pennsylvania, but it, I, I would say like, I've seen a lot of essays, even examples of good essays that this is on par with, okay. right, for, okay. for many schools. Um, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Anything coming in through the chat? Cause I'm not looking at it right now. <laughs> that was just um, so comments. some of the questions, and I think you've answered it in terms of you'd be able to say, put in the same kind of prompter information in the 3.5 version and end up with an- Yeah, it wouldn't be quite as good as, as this, okay? Now, what I can do is, is like, just to give you a set, I'm gonna do this now. I was gonna do it later, but I'm gonna pull up uh, copy leaks, okay? Which is like an AI detection tool. Okay, so I can do this uh, and I can basically check to see if this is written by AI or not. Okay, so here you can see this is an interesting one. This is actually the, the, the we're going to be implementing this at like scale probably within our system uh, this year. But you can see it's like, hey, it thinks that this is probably AI generated. But what's interesting is it says that this may not be. See, 26.5% for human is wow. overall, okay? This is, so this is, says 26.5% for human. This is 85.5% for AI. This new found passion, a career in education allowing me to be a positive force of change. Secondly, you know, my time with Pyvalo. So it's, it's identifying some things, but not all, mm-hmm. okay? And what's really interesting about this is that, um, the, the the challenge is going to, and the reason why I'm talking about this a bit is that schools already might implement like a plagiarism detector, mm-hmm. okay? And the main, re- like, I think the UCs do this. And the main reason why they do that is just to see that somebody straight up copy something from the internet and basically write the same thing. And a plagiarism detector also gives, this is also a plagiarism detector as well, copy leaks, very commonly used. Um, will look for exact matches and then it will also give you a percentage score but it's much more likely because it will spot exact phrasing that is exactly copied okay like word for word all right this is way more challenging right there is a lot of gray area here and this one looks like hey this is doing a pretty decent job of ai detection but what happens if I actually went in here and started making some of my own edits to this? And I'm not going to do that now because we don't have the time, but you can very quickly get it to be like pretty low probab- like probability AI for some of the written components, okay? And you have to ask yourself, hey, this is the first year this exists. How many schools are really going to implement an AI detector? Given that if I plug this into a different AI detector, it will have a different answer than this AI detector does. Okay. And there's some articles out there that's are pretty interesting. It's like, hey, let me run all sorts of different things through AI detectors. And some of them are like, hey, this is not AI written at all. And but the other one will say it is, right? And it's kind of all over the place. Okay. Um, additionally, and this is not relevant for this year, but will be in the future, is the AI detector only can detect AI, the, the this stuff based off of this particular model where it's pulling this particular data from, okay? Like if I took the chat GPT model and put it on a different data set of college admissions essays, it would actually have a different result here. It would probably have zero, it might even have 0% AI 
written, even if it was the exact same, even if it was 100% AI written, because it was worked on a different data set. Okay. Mm -hmm. These are things that are happening. Now, doesn't really matter much for this year because I doubt there's going to be like, hey, we're a brand new data set for college admissions essays that people are going to create a, a thing on, right? Uh, a model on. Um, but just something to think about is like this, and why I'm mentioning this is like, this is going to be a sub substantial problem from here on out, okay? This is not getting solved by AI detectors, okay? That is the, the, the key point here. It's just not gonna be solved by AI detectors. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is, here, one second, I'm getting asked for a, a car key so my wife can pick up our, our, our kids from school. Sorry about that. All right. Um, so the, the key here is, so now we're going to ask it a couple of other questions, okay? Um, now we're going to ask it, is this a good topic for a common application essay? Okay, let's see what it says. So it thinks it's a good topic. Okay, why does it think that this is a good topic? Is because it's pulling information from all over the internet, right? And so we all know that, hey, maybe this isn't the greatest topic necessarily to write about. A lot of people do write about it. Um, there's certain ways, like if, you're, if this is your most compelling piece of content, like other things that you should also consider writing about. Um, but this is like the type of response you're going to get. Like if I'm just brainstorming and be like, hey, I'm thinking about writing about X. Like, what am I going to get back? Right. And see here, hey, this is a good topic. Right. And this is why. Right. A mission trip from Mexico. You tutored students in math. And discuss the importance of education. Demonstrates blah, blah, blah. Positive qualities. Blah, blah, blah. Um, in your essay, be sure to outline challenges you face or the, the, the personal insights you gained. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Right. And so, you know, some of this is like standard stuff that we would kind of tell a student like to think about, right, right as, as they're doing this. Okay. Yeah. I love the last slide line there that says helps paint a vivid picture of your character and your potential to contribute positively to the university community. That's stuff we tell students all the time. Yeah. And by the way, why is it doing this? It's because it's because it's pulling from all the information we publish online, right? right? So like stuff that I would publish online on how to write this, these types of essays might get in these systems as well. Right. So, um, or any of us, you know, put, put online, um, is, is doing right. Um, you know, so Brad, or, can you go back and talk about, you mentioned something taking from a different data set. Not everybody knows what you mean by that. Yeah. So I'll give an example, right. So let's say um, I have, so right now, this is basically pulling from all sorts, we don't know exactly the data sources it's pulling from, it doesn't tell us, but it's kind of pulling from across the internet, okay? And so if I instead said, okay, I am actually only going to create a database of only good essays, okay? And I'm going to create a database of essays that got into you know Ivy League and Ivy equivalent type institutions. And I'm gonna say, hey, I'm only gonna take common application essays from students that I know that got into those institutions that I also believe those essays are good, okay? And I create, take like a database of like 2000 of those, all right? Then I take this model that they have here, which I'm allowed to do this. I can pay money to take this model, put it on my own data set and have it create a result like this. Oh, wow. Okay. And that will be a much substantially better result than what you're seeing here. Because you have your own database of all this content. Like of actual good essays. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Or yeah. I could ask it a question. Like if I asked it, if I used my own content, right, that mm -hmm. said, what is a good essay and what is not a good essay and <laughs> a bunch of example essays. And I put that together in a model and I asked this question, it would not have told me, yes, this is a good topic. Or it would have said, this may be a good topic if you were able to do X, Y, and Z. Okay. My point is, is that we are in the early stages of this. Yeah. Somebody could create that. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, for better or for worse. 
okay? Um, what are four good topics to write? What are four ideas of what to write about for a uh, college essay? You know, this is something else that a student might come and do because they might say, hey, I have no idea what to even write about. All right. Mm -hmm. So now it's like giving me some ideas, right, of, of what to do. And, you know, these are kind of questions that we might even ask a student, right, with some context associated with it. And, and it's right here, right? A unique passion or talent, right? A transformative experience you went through. Overcoming a personal challenge or adversity, right? All this stuff is, is right here, you know, for us, okay? Um, you know, give me four ways to start in a college essay about this topic. So I'm now just gonna pull down this exact same thing that I, I, I wrote before. Right, so you can see here, right, a meaningful mentor, or a role model, right? Like there's, there's things that are like, hey, these are brainstorming things that we might also include for, for a student, but they're kind of doing it here. And once again, by the way, I'm using like the, mo the currently the more advanced model, the ones that some of your students will probably have access to this fall versus the one that currently, you know, your students have free access to. Uh, it's $20 a month for the access to the advanced model. Uh, students are cheap, so they're probably not paying for it. Um, and I'm sure Carmen's just like, yep. That's <laughs> no, I think I think that they would. I think that they would just. Yeah, they would. Like yeah, people. Like, yeah. <laughs> because so, I don't see how it's any different than Chag at this point. Yeah. So here, here you got like anecdotal opening. As I stepped off the plane, my heart, blah blah blah, anticipation, right? A descriptive opening, a thought-provoking opening. It's often described as unlocking opportunities. Oh my goodness, this is so bad, right? Like we Allison, know this Allison, is Allison said, so it's leaning toward the trite to build into the system. <laughs> yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like, if you you could theoretically create the problem is is like it's pulling from stuff that we know is like yeah. the problem is most people put examples of essays online, as we all know, that are like yeah. these beautiful descriptive essays that need like you know that people are trying to use these metaphors for and all sorts yeah. of other stuff, right? And we know that that's not necessarily the thing to do. But that's what's online, so that's what it gets pulled, pulled mm -hmm. from, right? Well, and it's interesting that it actually tells you what the different types of opening, the anecdotal, the descriptive, the thought-provoking. I mean, that's that's helpful. I, I think that would be helpful for a student. Well, yeah, that's my that's my point. It's like, look, at the end of the day, like, the input is what matters, right? And so, if, you know, the way I look at this is, the number one thing students struggle with is like how to start, mm -hmm. like just putting some words down. So if you, you know, and like, I know within like where, where, how we work with students is we have them fill out this application plan, which has a ton of different questions, brainstorming questions, that sort of thing. And they build like really rich pieces of content around their experiences. They could go in and be like, Hey, here's this experience that I've already like written a good amount about, like write me an opening for an essay for this. Okay. And then you get a bunch of options. And the key here is, is like, you know, for not for students to use these openings, but to, to think about them, right? As like, how can I like pull these different ideas or pieces together to execute it? Now, once again, let's step back to the big problem that we have here, which is that only 2% of people are high literacy, okay? So 2%, only 2% of your people and granted, this is probably maybe call it a quarter of your students, right? Or a third of your students, okay? Would actually be able to go through and kind of evaluate these on their merits and figure out how to piece together a better option for themselves, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay? But call it two thirds of your students would struggle to do that. And those are the students we have to be the most worried about because they're the most likely to just straight up take it. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Or they don't think they're taking it, but they're almost copying it word for word. Yeah. They're like, well, it's my own writing. It's like, well, only two words are different. Exactly. Exactly. But they think it's their own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the problem with AI and the mindset these students have is they think it's their own. Because they're like, hey, it was my idea that went into this and it just wrote it for me. It's mine. 
okay? And the concern there, by the way, is, is that if they're doing that, and as I said, like a good portion of your students may do this because they're, they, they don't have the capabilities to actually do the stuff themselves. Um, those are when it starts getting a little concerning of like, what is the AI detector really going to say at the end of the day and which schools are going to imp implement AI detectors and how are they actually going to use the AI detection information that they're getting for like an acceptance or rejection decision. Okay. Right. All of these are questions for this year. It's a big, big open question for this year of, of what's going to happen here. I, my bet is, is that not a lot of schools will figure out how to implement the AI detectors, <laughs> um, but it's a concern. Okay. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to pull up uh, a draft of an essay. It's one that I commonly use with people um, for a student of a first draft. And we're just going to play around with it a little bit within chat GPT. Okay. Any other questions or things that have comments that have come in that have been interesting so um, far? And a lot is how do you think this would come into play with students um, signing on the Common App, app indicating that their work is their own? They don't, students aren't going to care. Okay. We've all been to college. We've all seen how many people cheat in, in college, right? And sign things. Um, you're going to have some students that are take the moral high ground here and chances are those are the ones that are you know kind of your your most most self-motivated students um but i think the the real question is is for each of us is to kind of think through if they're going to be using this anyways or you know students are maybe using this is like how do we actually drive them to better learning mm -hmm. okay of, of how to like actually critically think about the outputs and actually like how do they actually improve their writing okay so like let's just be honest here if on the common app you say hey i did not use an ai written tool and somebody thinks well there's like zero chance that the ai detector is going to pick this up or they're willing to take that risk because guess what this ai detector is not it's not what i would call definitive no Mm -mm. Right. Is a school going to be like, hey, I'm going to go on this and say it definitely is AI detected? I think in this case, I'd probably be like, yeah, it seems like it's probably written by AI. Probably. But this but is just they, one example. Yeah. But if you take AI content and mix it with your own, then. Yeah. Just even modify a few words. Maybe it's not going to show. Or even much, add right? your own paragraph so, and generates an idea and you add something in that it you know, that it didn't know or you didn't put in there. So then it's your own. They can truthfully say, this is my own work. You know? Yeah, well, it depends, right? Because they they will believe it's their own when it may not be, sure. right? I think that's the thing. So is the student answering? Like, so we, we you know, all of these are considerations. And, and I would just say, it's like, let's be honest with like how students actually function, okay? And I'm in this, I've seen a lot of stuff in this industry, right? I, I, I play not just in the admissions essay space, I'm like in all of education. And let me tell you, the vast majority of students that are out there, they're just trying to get by, okay? Mm -hmm. So in other words, I was talking a number of years ago, somebody has like had this writing website that had a bunch of examples of writing of, of different essays on it. And they're like, yeah, when we surveyed our users, like, none of them really care about getting A's. They're like, I just want to pass. Like, I want to get the C or the D or whatever. And they're just like, students are just copying and pasting different pieces of this or, you know, whatever they're doing. And so, yeah, maybe it's like a few percent of students are, are just going to be like, I'm just not going to use this at all. Or I'm going to use this, but I'm going to leverage it in a, an intelligent way to improve my own stuff. But once again, only 2% of people are high literacy. And in those cases, I would say, are maybe capable of doing a lot of these different things. And so you end up with a lot of students that are like, just kind of trying to get by. They're like, hey, I'm just gonna use this. It's the last minute. I'm just gonna have the AI generate the essay for me. I'm gonna plug it into my application. Those don't necessarily affect us as much as as uh, uh, as coaches or IECs, right? Um, but you're gonna see a ton of usage of ChatGPT guaranteed the last week of October. Mm -hmm. okay. yep. or, or the last week of November, right? Right before these deadlines, you're going to see massive spike in usage. Probably going to end up being an advantage for, for students that are working with IECs and coaches, but we need to figure out how we're going to really intelligently work with students 
while we understand that they may be leveraging this technology, do we want to, and this is each of our own personal decisions, do we want to push them to use this in certain situations or kind of actually have them have this involved in brainstorming or getting started? Do we provide this as like, hey, this is okay to use it, but like, here's the boundaries you can use it around. Like, these are all questions that each of us need to figure out for our own practices and what we're going to do. Um, and, you know, I, I can share my thoughts on it, but like, it, you know, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's just like each, each person kind of has, has to make their kind of own individual, you know, decisions here. Um, I will say that I think this is a tool that exists that's going to be here to stay permanently. My biggest concern is around actually teaching people the proper critical thinking skills to be able to leverage technology in a way that, you know, it's, it, it, it's, it's complementary rather than replacing. Okay. And that to me is the, the biggest challenge here. And one that I kind of think about for everybody here is like, how do we kind of think about it from that lens? Okay. Because people are going to be using this um, and, and, uh, and not just for college admissions essays, but what you'll find is, is that for college admissions essays, there's no right or wrong, but for, Hey, I'm writing me a paper about X topic in school. You see this, this is filling in gaps and just making information up. It does that for real facts. Okay. And it will be wrong sometimes. And so students are writing stuff or if they just copy stuff from class or they're like, Hey, this looks good. Let me change a few words. They will actually have wrong content in essays they write for class. Okay. Or they might use this at work at some point and there'll be wrong content in there for work. And now they're making a business decision based off of, <laughs> of stuff that does not, is not true. Okay. Um, and the problem is, is that people are not able to read their reading comprehension skills and their critical thinking skills are not strong enough to be able to identify those issues or gaps. Okay. And that, and that once again, goes back to that 2% high literacy, right? A able to evaluate evidence-based arguments. So if they're not able to identify the accuracy and precision of the information that's within, sorry, I'm, this is like the critical thinking lingo, the accuracy and precision of, of what's in <laughs> the, the, what they're reading, um, it's, it's, it's going to be a problem. Okay. Um, so just mentioning that. Uh, let me go ahead and I'm just going to pull up a draft of an essay that I have here. This is like, if you've heard some of my talks or heard some stuff, uh, I have this essay like on a burrito that the student had like a number of years ago. Um, and we're just going to plug this also into chat GPT, have a little bit of fun with it. Um, so we're going to have to do a couple of different things. Um, provide feedback on my on how to improve my common application here is my first draft okay Let's see what it says so this essay is like about like this person that was struggling to make this burrito uh, at Qdoba Mexican Grill, um, you know, so it's like, hey, here's this analogy to uh, blah, 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 personal growth, adaptability, problem solving, you know, consistent tone, group paragraph structure. Again, it sounds like things we would put in, uh, you know, comments on a student. Yeah, it, exactly. And, yeah. and what I would say is, is that, which, which tends to be a little bit of a struggle is like, where does this really fail? Okay. Mm -hmm. Where like, these are kind of like the basic points around the actual, just like what exists in the essay today, rather than like what could exist yeah. or should exist. Because this does not have the context of understanding the student. And therefore, it really, a lot of times, um, fails to identify things of like, you know, those little nuggets that we see in some of these essays that are like, wait, that's the thing that should be way expanded. Okay. And this one has that too, where in the conclusion, it talks about um, like the, almost the whole essay is about burritos. And then it's like, how can I adjust my teaching so I understand what glumatophoritis and projectile motion are? And it's like, well, 
why don't you talk about teaching? Like, that's really interesting. Like, why do you have this giant word in there? Why is all this stuff there, right? When you see the final draft of this essay that the student eventually got to, like, that's a huge part of the essay, right? Of, of what they were able to do and accomplish with, with work, doing stuff there. But you don't really see that here, right? This is very, like, most of the commentary tends to be very much at, like, the surface level, okay? Which is not bad, but it's surface level, okay? Um, but it does do a good job of like picking out the uh, like some of the the like traits, right, or, or things you know within it that you want to you know touch upon, right? And so I don't know. Uh, my son is uh, asking me something, um, and so yeah. So the 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 issue is um, you know here is like okay, draining the distractions, clarifying points are rephrased, right? Um, but you can do a lot more than this, like, and just ask, like, very detailed or specific things about certain essays. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, um, rewrite this essay in 250 words, this uh, college essay, to be 250 words, okay? So we're going to do this. Sorry, my son is, like, right behind me playing with a robot right now. Um, it's fine, Brad. Well, it's fine. I know it's just like <laughs> is what it is you missed the comment earlier that I'll just mention for everybody but he he said ready to be wiped um like I, I think the the computer didn't pick that one up so <laughs> um so I got to do that after this so I don't even want to know what's what's going on behind me okay so <laughs> so here like this essay in particular was really interesting is like Pretty much the entire content of the essay could have been like basically reduced to like 200, 250 words, and then a lot more content to be added into it. Okay. And so, what I'm now doing is asking this to basically go through and rewrite the essay to be more condensed and to have it take some of the key points here. Right. Um, and so, as this is writing, we'll just kind of come back up here and we can just take a quick read through this and then we'll see like, how did it actually condense it? Okay. Right. I'm just going to read the first part of it. Looking down, I saw the pieces of shredded pork starting at filling out of the gaping hole. The woman gawked at me from the other side of the food bar as I started to think of an excuse. Her choice of fillings was awful. How could she expect me to wrap over two scoops of three cheese queso and shredded pork without at least half the filling squirting out? I'm new, I blurted, using the same excuse as I used with previous 50 customers. I could see she replied, as an awkward silence followed, right? And it just keeps going. This is my hardest burrito yet, right? She finally figured out how to wrap this burrito. This is my proudest moment all year. And then she finally gets the stuff at towards the end of the essay. So it's like hundreds of words of content, you know, related to this like experience wrapping a burrito. Now we're gonna read this, okay? As I struggle to wrap the customer's overstuffed burrito, right? So automatically just kind of, just condensing a ton of stuff. I realized that my summer job at Kudo at Mexican Grill was more than just making food. It was a lesson in perseverance and adaptability. Despite my academic success, I couldn't seem to master the art of burrito making. Each day, my burritos were lumpy, soggy messes that left me feeling defeated. One day, facing faced with an angry customer and a torn burrito, I decided to change my approach. I took the time to analyze my technique, identifying the problems and adjusting my strategy. After several attempts, I finally crafted a decent burrito that brought a hint of a smile to the customer's face. And that experience taught me to value the embrace, embracing challenges and learning from my mistakes. I realized that no challenge is too small to teach valuable life lessons. As I tackled each new burrito, I became, grew more confident in my ability to adapt and overcome obstacles in college and beyond, blah, 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 right? So, and this, by the way, like if I had said 350 words or 400 words, right? Would have given me even more detail here. But as you can see, like, if you read the other one and you read this, I'm eventually getting the same information. The other one's a little more interestingly written, but that's because it had more words. But the key point here is, is that a really interesting use case here is to have students write a lot and then have this condense, okay? Um, and then figure out where to expand from there. Because the, what I mentioned before is that students have never been taught really like how do I actually like condense ideas 
or like combine sentences or combine ideas together into single sentences or identify what is what we call relevant and significant information versus details, right. okay? And what details matter and what details don't matter. Like students have never learned this stuff generally. Even the high literacy students are, are basically being told to write more versus less, okay? And, and so this is like, an, like I would say, because a lot of our coaches, we spend a lot of time helping students like identify just different words and stuff to cut in what they've written. Um, and while you want to keep their voice the same, the key part here is, is like if students have like a lot, like really long content or even shorter content, you're like, hey, remove five words from this. Like you can do that type of stuff as well. Okay. And we'll just remove the five words, like find five words to remove and, and, or give me five options for like saying this exact same thing in like five fewer words. Like those are things that you can do within ChatGPT that produce results that at least kind of get your mind thinking of how to use it or of what to do, okay? And to me, the most important thing from a student perspective is that critical thinking, right? Actually like interpreting what they're reading, thinking about it in the context that they need to be able to deploy it within and then deploying it, okay? So to me, there's like a lot of opportunity here to actually expand critical thinking abilities within students um, to, to actually generate better, better outcomes, okay? Now, what's gonna be interesting is, is we're gonna take this and we're gonna throw this into the AI detector now, okay? So let's clear this out. What do we think this result's gonna be? And we just have just a few more minutes. Yeah, this is like the last thing I want to do okay. because and then there's now, one of your questions question. that I know. Everybody yeah, so you can see wondering. here, it's like, hey, this actually thinks that it's AI detected because it may have condensed it, maybe. Um, but interesting. Okay, let's go. Let's get to the. Let's get to the questions. So regarding what you just did, do you think that can be a strong teaching tool? Would we let students do that and submit it after tweaking? I, I don't have like the strongest opinion on this yet because I have not kind of, uh, you know, tried to work with students leveraging the chat GPT capability yet. Um, I think that one of the things you may want to consider doing uh, is if you're, if you actually are meeting with the student live and brainstorming some stuff, depending on like how the student is working or behaving or interacting, this could be a fun tool to kind of pull up and use that as a teaching moment to actually go through and say, hey, let's take a look at this result together. Like, what do you think about this? Or like, how would you use this result in like your writing? So for example, if you're like, hey, let's like brainstorm some ideas on how we're gonna start our essay. And if they're kind of like blank on that, or they have some like bad ideas, then you can kind of pull this out and be like, hey, let's actually like have a little fun. Let's like plug this into chat GPT and see what it comes up with. And then you can ask some like targeted questions to the student that actually really focuses on those like critical thinking skills that are not things that the student may think about when they're just reading it on their own. But for the next essay they might write, they might be like, oh, let me go to ChatGPT and see what other ideas it has for how I should start this essay. And then now they're like, oh yeah, I remember when I was working with, with Cindy, she asked me this specific question about these four ideas that I got. Now I'm gonna ask myself that same question. Okay, because what you're doing is you're teaching the critical thinking skills of how they need to think about the responses that they're getting, if that makes sense. Okay, so the same thing could be if you are working on making an essay concise, right? It's like, hey, you, you wrote 850 words for this Common App essay. Like, where, where do you think you would, you would cut content or like, how would you go about doing that? And if the student's really struggling with that, it's like, hey, let's plug that into ChatGPT and see what it does. And then actually talk through the result. Okay. That's the most important piece of this is like to actually have those discussions and to ask those questions of our students exactly kind of how we would normally think about teaching them to actually build those critical thinking frameworks of like, hey, if I get a result, like how do I use that result? Okay. How, how do I actually like interpret it? Okay. Um, so that that's kind of how I've been thinking about this as, as a tool is like a tool for like engaging and thinking about critical, you know, critical thinking and reading comprehension skills. 
um, you know, which are like the foundation of like literacy, right? Um, so hopefully that's helpful. So the last um, question I would say is, how do you think colleges are going to respond to this? What are you hearing in that? Because that that's the big thing. It's like, you know, are, and somebody says, are they going to do away with essays? And we talked, mentioned it in an interview with John Burdick from Cornell. He's like, we haven't even started. He knows, they know students, as you said, are going to use it. So they haven't even started um, evaluating what they're going to do. Yeah, I, I think I have a hypothesis here. Okay. Which is, I think that um, the most highly selective institutions that are using the content within essays to differentiate between students are highly unlikely to change. Okay. And I think a lot of it's because they know that the content matters more than the actual writing itself. Okay. So like, what did the student actually do? What did they actually accomplish? Right. What are those, is the student like unusually driven? Right. And you can see like reading through this, like that's just AI generated. You don't get any of that. Okay. And that's the primary thing. I think we're going to see kind of on schools that care less about essays and are mostly using academics to make decisions. I think we're going to see there that schools may drop essays entirely. Okay. Because a huge portion of them might actually be AI generated anyways. Okay. So not going to speculate on which institutions those might be or not, but just a hunch that we're going to see uh, a lot of institutions may just drop essays because of that, uh, that thing. Now, I, you know, some people might speculate, oh, you know, we're going to have like proctored essay writing, you know, for schools. Um, I think the only way that that actually can happen is if schools align on the exact same set of essays that they want the students to write. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because schools don't want the number of applications to decrease. Right. Because then they'll seem less expensive. Like, so you have to think of like their incentives. And I just highly doubt that that's going to happen. Okay. But I will say that like, you're going to see a lot of students utilizing this technology, uh, even applying to the more highly selective schools. I think that students that utilize this technology to and, and do not use it from like a critical thinking, just idea generation standpoint mm -hmm. or a support, but actually are like really doing the hard work themselves. I feel like those students are just not going to get in. It's just highly unlikely, right? Because we know that the output is does not have the strongest content, okay? But I will say that there's a number of institutions, we can all think of different names of institutions or whatnot that may end up doing away with essays specifically because of this. Mm -hmm. And they're probably not using essays as like a major differentiating factor anyways today. So, well, do you think some will go, because I've heard discussion about, well, maybe they'll go back or increase the number of, interviews like or video you know where you have a two or three minute introduce yeah we we've all i think we've all seen the industry move back and forth like there was a number of what zme profiles yep. we all remember those right yep. um yep. long gone you know a lot of people had done the videos what you what we really need to think about is the motivations of the institutions and of the people reading the applications okay they don't want to necessarily have to watch a bunch of videos they want to be able to read something really quickly and make a determination. Okay. So we know that we know that the videos is just like, it was just kind of like, it, did, it didn't really take, it was too much effort. Um, you see initial view being heavily utilized, but that's for international primarily, not in the United States. The alumni interviews, as we already know, like most alumni interviews, what are primarily to engage with the alumni rather than the actually using the results of the interview. We've all heard of the alumni interview horror stories, but guess what? They want the alumni to donate money to the school. They want them to feel that connection. Like that's why it exists in a lot of ways. So my point on this is, is like, let's think of what the schools actually care about. And the answer is the schools actually care about filling seats and they care about the students graduating. Right. Okay. And then they care about alumni donations. These are the things that they actually care about. They care a lot less about student learning than you actually want to think they do. Um, just a fact. Um, and, uh, and so because of that, you know, at the end of the day, like if somebody gets through or admitted because they were leveraging AI and they made a mistake in that admission process, hey, admissions mistakes are already made today, yeah. right? Yeah. Some students drop out, some students struggle at schools, like they're making them today. The question is like, is that going to massively increase the number of admissions mistakes they make? My hypothesis is no. Okay. Um, 
And, and, and maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think we're going to see a substantial increase in, in that because you can, as you see, you, you're reading through these essays and you're like, sounds kind of good, but it's fluff. Like you just know it, right? And guess what? They're reading those essays today and they know it's fluff. Right. Okay. So that, that, that's, that's what I think on it. I think it's going to change how we may work with students on essays and other things like that. But, but uh, you know, I don't, I don't think it's going to be a this huge, massive change in the market. Um, you know, I don't see the United States in the United States schools going to like the written interviews, like like Cambridge or like Oxford do, like in the UK, um, because that like proctoring a bunch of essays is difficult. And as I said, like all the schools would need to kind of align on essays because uh, nobody, you know, even Harvard does not want to decrease from sixty thousand applicants a year to like ten thousand, no. right? No, not at all. They don't even, want even if they're getting the exact same quality of students at the end of the day, right. they, they just right. want the admit rate to be low. <laughs> Okay. Right. That's right. that's, that's money literally money. their incentive, right? right? Yeah, yeah well, there's a lot of money that comes in. Oh but, yeah, and a lot of money comes in, but I think that the main thing is just the they want to look super selective. Yeah. Right. So they they don't want to decrease the uh the ease of application if you will. Mm -hmm. Um yeah. Well, Brad, thank you so much. I, everybody has just been blown away. It's really having seen that demonstration in real life is so powerful. I really appreciate you sharing all of the data and the research and everything that goes along with it as well. Um, I think we'll have to have a reprise and maybe in the fall when we're starting, you know, students are submitting essays or working on them, you know, things will progress a little bit by then too. So we might have to. Yeah. And I'm happy to like, cause I mean, obviously we're thinking about a lot of this right now. And so I'm happy to, uh, you know, as we're like getting started with students and, and, you know, seeing kind of like we're leveraging this in some way um, or seeing what students are doing, like it may be useful to, to do that. Uh, as we kind of get into the to the height of the season, I totally agree. And you said prompt is implementing um, an AI. Yeah, we're we're in the process of implementing an AI checker. Okay, into the, it'll be an additional fee, but it's like you'll be able to choose kind of what you want. You're like, hey, I kind of suspect this, and it'll be it's the implementation of what you see with copy leaks because they actually highlight passages for you. They're like the only one that currently does that, where you're like, hey, this. Oh yeah, yeah, and that, that kind of fits, you know, with that. So, uh, if that's a big concern of yours, or you're just super interested in that, you know, feel free to shoot me a note at brad at prompts.com, um, and uh, happy to answer any and all questions. Like I'm pretty new to this too, right? But we're all kind of new to this. But I, I, I do have the, uh, I do think about this, you know, we're we're uh, taking a look at a lot of this stuff now, so. Well, okay. and I think that's so important. And it, and like everything else, you know, thinking about it, it's a tool and it can be used for good or for bad, you know, positively or negatively or well or not well. And so that's our role is to figure out what that is. And the thing is, it's going to be changing. And that's the thing. It's like pulling the rug, you get it figured out and then the rug will be pulled out and you have to start all over again, right? Yeah. Well, I would just say like the final comment is, is like this model, there'll probably be a better version of it, call it a year from now, GPT-5 or whenever that's going to come out. But I don't think it's going to be massive. Like it's not going to be a step change improvement over what it currently exists. Because as you're seeing, it's like filling in a lot of gaps already. It's not going to, suddenly figure out like, hey, student, maybe you should talk about X in your essay because it doesn't necessarily know that from what you prompted it, right? Um, so it is just that I think is the main thing is like, yes, it might have incremental improvements associated with these types of essays that we're writing. Um, but I think that the big question is going to be like, is there going to be a model that's specifically created for college admissions essays? That is going to be the open question because that, that would potentially have a much bigger impact or effect. Okay. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. And I'll, I'll try to get over, uh, you know, that information on like the high literacy stuff. Cause I do think it, it massively has changed just kind of like how I think about like education and working with students. And that might be helpful for everybody. As yeah. Well. I'll put it in the show notes. So it'll be on our website. Oh, look at show notes. This is I fancy. Be in show notes. Yes. This is yeah. so fancy these days. <laughs> oh my goodness. Show notes. Um, <laughs> I know. All right. Love well, it. this was thank fun. You. All right. Thank Thanks you, everybody. everybody.
Join us next week. We're going to have Hannah Stotland, one of our own. She's going to talk about um, valuing yourself. We're just going to kick the imposter syndrome out the door. That's our topic for next week. And I just spoke with her earlier this morning, so we're both excited to have that. The other thing I'll mention is I've just added a Name Your Price workshop. Uh, we just had one yesterday. It went really well. If you're struggling and trying to think of, I want to increase your prices or change my prices, I have no idea what to set for my prices. I have a whole workshop. And I know and I'm convinced we're all asking the wrong questions when we're trying to figure out how much we're charging and what we should be charging. So that's going to be April 6th. And the registration is open for that. And that'll be in the show notes as well. Yeah. Carmen, one, thank one, you one very much. One comment on, on price, just funny um is there there's a mark andreessen who's like the person creator of nets netscape like the first web browser uh and a famous venture capitalist he has like he was asked like what message would you put up on a billboard if you had a billboard and he just said raise prices just <laughs> um so <laughs> just what you're saying it's just like it always comes to mind is like raise prices right <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Yep, I, I'm convinced our industry, and Hannah feels this way too, we talked about this morning, is we're undercharging. We don't yeah. value what we offer enough. And so we're undercharging for the services we offer. So yeah. I have All some good. information. Everybody have a great weekend. Thank you very much. We'll see you next Friday. Okay. Right. Thanks, everyone. Bye. 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 Thanks, Carmen. Bye-bye.